It happened again. I accidentally did a good, and not just that, I did like a very good on YouTube. And all it took was an enticing leg, an enticing title, and taking one hell of a big risk. And it all has to do with this video that I posted recently on Grand Line Review. So I'm going to take you on a journey of how this video was made and how it's changed everything that I, I thought I knew about this platform because I am always learning. Everyone is always learning. Now, weirdly enough, this video idea didn't actually start off with anything One Piece related whatsoever, which is strange because because it was for a One Piece channel, but I was basically looking at famous movie posters one day and I came across the iconic poster for The Graduate, a film which is, oh, it is so much older than I thought it was, but it has this iconic image of the leg and the whole, huh, Mrs. Robinson, you're trying to seduce me thing. You know, it's got that going on. So as I often do with things like this, and this might be embarrassing to admit in public, but when I see stuff like this, what I immediately think of is, huh, so what would this be like with One Piece characters? And immediately I thought of Boa Hancock, trying to seduce Luffy. Except it would go much more comically wrong because he would have no idea what was going on. And that mental image was really fun. So then I asked myself, huh, can, can I make an entire video based around that concept? And it was difficult. It was very difficult because One Piece is a shonen series. And the vast majority of One Piece videos focus on you know, stuff like fighting and powers and lore and, and stuff. But I liked this image so much that I eventually settled on trying to make a video based on romance in One Piece. Something that really never gets spoken about. So at least the video is fresh. However, at the same time, if something never gets spoken about, there's probably a very good reason why it doesn't get spoken about, which is usually that it's, it's just not a wildly popular topic. So immediately, this was a very risky video. If I was seriously trying to min-max YouTube, then I would have just dismissed this topic from the get-go because it's just too hard to sell, which is the unfortunate reality of YouTube. When thinking about videos, you've pretty much got to tick three boxes. The first is, is the video something that you want to talk about? The second would be, is the video something that viewers want to watch? And number three, which is, is the video something YouTube is likely to serve people to watch? Because two and three are surprisingly different and ideally you really need to be ticking at least two out of these three box things, which is bad, very bad, because I was only ticking one box with this video, which is that it was something I wanted to talk about. And I really did want to talk about it because it's untouched territory for me, which is weird because I've made almost a thousand videos on One Piece, so finding a fresh topic is actually actually extremely rare. But before I even started writing this video, I made a mock-up thumbnail just to test if my mental image actually translates into reality. And so I reconstructed the scene from The Graduate as I predict it would play out in the One Piece world. Boa trying to seduce Luffy, and he's clearly being lured in by some sort of false promise. So when Boa presents herself to him, he's just like, ah, that, that's not food. To which she makes a fantastically heartbroken face fault, which is very important because I usually try to tap into an emotion with these kind of thumbnails. In fact, with all thumbnails. And also without Boa's face, it's not necessarily clear that it's her leg and the whole thing is just kind of falls apart. And to be perfectly honest, as much as I do get a laugh out of this ridiculous scene, at this stage, I'm still not sure about this video. It's, it's very risky because the metaphor One Piece videos is always like epic and action packed and profound. We want big things happening, not small quirky comedy moments. But at the same time, you do need to take risks fairly frequently. And really the worst thing that could have happened is that the video fails and hey, my hypothesis is confirmed. I won't do it again, bad content creator, bad. So I send the mock-up thumbnail to my artist to make the assets for it with some more detailed instructions, like say, make it a post time skip Luffy and you know, stuff like that. In the meantime, I go about writing the video and I actually have quite a bit of fun with it. Topics like this usually give you a bit more license to be absurd and comical because nobody is taking it seriously like they would do with in-depth lore and theories and analysis. And I even asked my audience for a bunch of potential scenarios is featuring Boa asking Luffy out on a date to incorporate and they're all fun. It's a fun video. So I record it, I film it, send that stuff to one of my editors. And at this point, a lot of time has passed. And so my artist sends through the thumbnail assets. They look fantastic as per usual. She is fantastic. Although I do have to rejig the thumbnail a bit, make Luffy a bit bigger, add some emphasis lines because the flat background was a bit stagnant and even add some color into the background because the white wasn't really working for me. I landed on blue because it contrasts well against the red and the yellow. Luffy being predominantly red and the text being yellow. Speaking of, I also gave the text a bit of a, a bit of a jaunty angle because it just felt a bit boring. And eventually, look, I ended up with something that I was pretty happy with. I say pretty happy because I don't think I've ever made a thumbnail that I've been 100% confident about, like especially this one. But we still haven't done the hardest part yet because this video, it needs a title. And no joke, this is the make or break. A bad title could quite literally cost a Grand Line Review video, maybe a hundred thousand views. 
reviews. So there's a, there's a little bit of pressure with getting this right. And I should say at this point that I do often have a title idea in mind when I come up with a thumbnail concept, but, <laughs> but not this time. Again, I was feeling super risky when I put this into production, so it had no title and that that's a bad idea. So how do we make a title? Well, my process for this is, it's kind of ever evolving, but with this video, I started with the most literal title possible, which is, Etchira Oda's changing opinions and implementation of romance in one piece. That is the most accurate possible representation of what this video is. It's incredibly accurate, but also incredibly boring because it reads like the title of an academic paper that maybe three other people will read whilst researching for their own boringly titled papers. And it's also just way too long. One very annoying thing about YouTube titles is that they get cut off if you're not careful. So you've really got to condense things into as few words as possible. So let's condense this a bit with a couple of different options. Oda's take on romance in one piece, the purpose of romance in one piece, the importance of romance in one piece. All of these are still very accurate titles, but also still so painfully boring. And yeah, there was an age of YouTube where stuff like this eh, would have worked. You know, when video essays were at their peak popularity, it works a lot less well these days though. Plus here's the thing, despite the fact that this video is about romance, I don't actually want the word romance in the title because realistically speaking, Grand Line Review has about a 95% male audience between the ages of 19 and 34. And in very broadly speaking terms, romance is not going to be a hot buzzword that gets everyone clicking. And yeah, yeah, look, maybe I should have thought about that before putting a whole video about romance into production, but I didn't. And so we need a more creative solution. Furthermore, I also want a title that conveys a sense of modernity and ideally urgency. A title like The Importance of Romance in One Piece. It does feel a bit timeless, which you would think is good. However, timeless often means that you could just watch that video at any time. It doesn't need to be now. And I don't want people to feel that way. When they see a Grand Line review video, I want them to feel, holy crap, I need to see that right now. So one option I then explored was to play up the Luffy and Boa aspect of the thumbnail. This is why Luffy and Boa will end up together. The Luffy X Hancock twist we didn't see coming. Did Oda just confirm Luffy X Boa Hancock? And I think that this batch is much more effective in conveying a bit of urgency. It's also diving into the realm of clickbait because the titles are becoming a bit more loosely related to the actual video material, especially the third one. But I think there is still a big problem here because again, I don't think that romance or relationships are going to make for a very clickable video with my audience. Those are the sorts of titles that probably appeal more to the agenda of a shipper than they do your average One Piece fan. And that's important because I go for the average fan. So I've got to figure out a way to frame this video to that perspective. And I did have an idea here, which resulted in a new batch of titles. You missed something big during the time skip. We missed something big during the time skip. Looks like we missed something big during the time skip, which I actually think are pretty appealing titles. The problem is that they are pure 100% raw clickbait. The video cannot possibly deliver on any of those because the title promises knowledge of an event that never actually happened. And as much as I think that they would have done quite well click wise, it's, it's a bit too far for me. However, what I do like is the feeling they convey. It's urgent, it's big, and it's relevant to the average One Piece fan. So I took that feeling and it led to what was the final batch of titles. Did Oda really just confirm this? There's no way Oda just confirmed this. It's insane that Oda confirmed this. And what we've done here is kept the sense of urgency and relevance, but we've removed the reference to a specific event. The title is quite deliberately vague, so much so that it's hard to be considered clickbait because there are words from Oda in this video confirming the things, and maybe, maybe that's insane. I don't know, it's very subjective. However, it does arguably cross the line of clickbait because it does not confirm what the thumbnail implies, which is something to do with Luffy and Boa Hancock. To be honest, I don't care though, because it's a great video. I had a lot of fun making it, and I know that people will get a lot of value out of watching it. And in a case like that, I am happy to cross that line a little bit more than I usually would. And hey, if I've gone too far, then you guys will definitely let me know. And we're about to find out if I did, because I do have the stats on that, but the title I eventually settled on was, it's insane that Oda confirmed this. And I went with that one because of the word insane. It conveys an emotion. And it works well with the kind of, well, frankly, insane situation happening in the thumbnail. With that said, I'm still not feeling wildly confident about all of this. It all just feels a bit too left field to me to work, even with how far I've taken the clickbait. So before I show you how the video did, here are my predictions, which I filmed about half an hour before posting it. All right, so it's about 9.30 PM Australian Eastern Daylight Time. I'm about to post the old romance video and I'm feeling, uh, well, 
I'm feeling not so great about it. It's just, it's just not a good topic. There's, there's no way around that. It's not about fighting. It's not about devil fruits. It's not about lore. It's not about new developments or revelations. It's just not what your average One Piece fan cares about. So I do think that I've, I've kind of doomed it from the beginning. So I don't think this video does well without pure raw clickbait in the title. And I haven't quite gone that far. I think I've pushed it about as much as I'm comfortable with. So yeah. I would be shocked if this was not dead last in the video rankings. 10 out of 10, but a bad 10 out of 10. If it's an eight or a nine, like I, I will rejoice at a nine, but I I'm pretty ready to accept my fate here. Sad thing is, I think it's a really good video. I really enjoyed making it. I think the comedy is on point. I think the discussion is surprisingly relevant. It's just an enjoyable 10 minutes. But videos being good is, you know, it's only about a third of the equation here. So uh, let's see, let's see how it does. So uh, past Liam there was feeling quite pessimistic. And I think he had every right to feel that way because everything about this video, with the exception of the title, screams YouTube failure, do not do this. So with that in mind, I posted the video and I didn't even look at the stats until the next morning because uh, I knew it would be a 10 and I really didn't need to see it. However, the next day I got a massive shock because this video had performed absurdly well. In terms of rankings, it was a two out of 10, meaning that of the last 10 videos posted on the channel, this was performing the second best. And remember, I said I'd be happy with a nine. So this, this is, this is elation. And I do think the bulk of the credit goes straight into the video title because the thumbnail created a fun, absurd, comical situation, but the title backed that up with some sort of impossible intrigue. And the thumbnail itself, I probably underestimated it because it does have a certain, how shall we say, appeal because it has an implied sexual situation. And of course the clickbait did go into slightly uncomfortable territory here. However, the video currently has a 97.8% like to dislike ratio, which is only mildly lower than average. It usually sits somewhere between 98 to 99%. So this is acceptable. And another key metric of satisfaction is viewer retention, which is sitting at the top end of average levels. Meaning that the key takeaway from this is that an above average amount of people decided to click the video and that larger group enjoyed the video just as much as a smaller group would with a less clickbaity title, which is scary because that's potentially teaching me a lesson that a few of you might get slightly annoyed at, but it's that people have a higher tolerance for clickbait than even I thought. And it's because even if the video doesn't really address the title, once you're through the door, it's an entertaining and valuable experience. Statistically speaking, of around a quarter of a million unique viewers, only about 5,000 felt disappointed by the experience. And that to me is a very acceptable ratio especially since that's it's pretty close to what the standard ratio is for any video regardless. All right, just a quick update on this here video thing. It has now been almost a full two days after posting it and this video has done the impossible. It is now number one in the rankings. This is ridiculous. It should not have happened. I should say that it's only beating the previous number one by about a thousand views. So it's a very razor thin margin, but still, hey, this, this is the little video that could. And another important thing this is, and another important thing this has taught me is that the One Piece fan base are much more willing to accept left field topics than I thought, which is exciting because there's a whole ton of stuff that I've just never touched because I didn't think anyone would watch it. However, the balancing act is that if you want to cover that kind of topic, then your title and thumbnail need to do a lot more heavy lifting than usual in potentially more dishonest ways. But I don't know, is the dishonesty worth it if you're still getting an amazing video that you otherwise would not have had? That's, that's the balancing act. There. But yeah, I just thought that that was an interesting experiment. I don't know if anyone will actually watch this video because I definitely don't spend anywhere near as much time or effort making titles or thumbnails for Dude in a Room. So if you're here anyway, thank you so much for watching and I don't know, awkward ending.